I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of us to our midweek service. We appreciate the Lord for his faithfulness and for his love. Indeed, it's because of his masses that we are not consumed. It is because of his love and his faithfulness that we are today. And therefore, we want to thank God for yet, this, yet another opportunity to come together and to be able to bring this service to you from Deliverance Church Langata. We do want to pray that uh, this service will be a blessing to you and this service also will be able to build the kingdom of God. And therefore, even as we start our service, I want us to reflect on Psalm chapter number 8. And we read together Psalm chapter number 8, reading from NIV. And the Bible reads, O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and covered him with glory and honor. You have made, you made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. All flocks and herds and the bits of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas, O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We come this evening to reflect on the majesty of our Lord, to reflect on the greatness of our God, to reflect on the sovereignty of our God. That our God is sovereign over all things. Our God is sovereign over all the creation. That even at time like this, at such a time like this, when the whole world is, uh, is, is, is oppressed by the pandemic of COVID-19, we know that God is still on his throne and God is still in control and it shall be well and it is well with those who believe and trust in him. And therefore today I want us to pray even as we start our service uh, this day. Let us pray together in Jesus name. Our Father and our God we are indeed very grateful. We thank you that God in you we live, we move and we have our being. We live at your pleasure dear Father. Oh God almighty there is nothing we can do without you. You are our God and our Father. We are here today. Oh Lord, to worship you. We come together to praise you. We come together, dear Lord, to declare that God, you are king and you reign in all the earth. And besides you, there is no other God. All the other gods are just but idols. You are God almighty. There is nothing that is impossible with you. Lord, we bring our issues to you today because you know that you have the solution to our problems, the solutions to our individual problems and to the problems of this world. Lord, we declare that we totally depend on you. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, I pray as we bring forth this service this day, the Lord, this service, Lord God, will be led by the Spirit to be able to minister to your people hope in the name of Jesus. We pray that God Almighty, that your kingdom will come in and rule in the, uh, in the lives of men and women, those who listen and follow this service, whether life or those follow in the social media, that this service will be able to impact their life and gravitate them towards you and to know Christ of whom to know is eternal life. We submit ourselves to you, Holy Spirit of God, take over, lead and guide and let everything be done to the praise and to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it, amen. 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 Worship him, please. Oh, Lord, my God, when I know someone, consider all the works thy hand has made. See the star, I see the stars, I hear the
Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. There is none like you. Hallelujah. For you are mighty and worthy. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy of God to receive all the glory and all the honor. We worship you, Lord. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor for there is none like you, oh God, we bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Your great, oh God, your might, your worthy, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Hakuna mungu kama wewe, hakuna mungu kama wewe.
you are there and you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today is your day. Open up your heart and he'll save you. Hallelujah. One more time. Oh, save me. Oh, save me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Oh, heal me. Oh, heal me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Oh, heal me. Oh, heal me. Oh, King Jesus. give you honor oh hallelujah we worship you we magnify your holy mighty name oh hallelujah lord we worship your holy name we acknowledge your majesty your authority your supremacy our god and our father there is none besides you dear redeemer we open our mouth in praise and in adoration we exalt your holy name dear redeemer we say let your kingdom come let your will be done here on earth as it is done, it is done in heaven. All our God and our Father, how awesome is your name. How majestic is your name. Heaven's Lord declares your glory. All the earth bow before you, dear Lord. We magnify you. We worship your holy mighty name. We worship you, dear Lord. You are holy, you are worthy, you are holy, you are mighty, dear Lord. We love you, dear Father. Thank you. Thank you for your everlasting love. Thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. Thank you for forgiving us our sins. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, your throne, oh dear Lord, is a throne of righteousness and justice, dear Redeemer. We love you. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank God for his blessings in our midst. We want to pick some few prayer points and pray. This is a midweek service. Usually we take a, a good a quality time to pray. And I want us to pray uh, for several issues. I want us to pray for the government. I want us to pray for the leadership and for the body of Christ and for the people of this nation and the entire world in Jesus' name. I want to reflect on uh, the book of First Timothy chapter number 2 and verses 1 and 2. And the Bible reads, I urge then, first of all, that requests prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. If you look at the background of this passage of scripture, when uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to uh, Timothy, you realize that it was a very uh, dangerous and very uh, challenging time because it was during the uh, reign of the notorious Roman Emperor Nero and therefore there was a lot of chaos, there were a lot of challenges and, uh, but Paul writes and, uh, to Timothy and tells him that we have a responsibility as the church to pray because God, the Bible says that the heart of a king is in the hands of God and like a river he directs it in whichever way that he chooses it is good and important for us to take our position and our responsibility as believers and pray for the kings and for the leaders of this nation in Jesus name and for, for we are grateful as a people we are grateful as a nation because of the freedom of worship we are grateful for our country Kenya where we can openly play for our leaders without intimidation without, uh, uh, without any threat but we have that freedom and therefore we thank God for that freedom and therefore we are going to take time to pray that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and in holiness even during these difficult times of COVID-19 pandemic that we are going to pray and believe God that this God who has been faithful will remain and will continue to work in our nation and even to help our leaders in Jesus name so I want us to go before God together if you are following this service life you pray with us as the Holy Spirit will lead you as we give you the prayer points and join with us as we pray 
over these issues that we are going to pray for this time. I want us to pray for our president. I want us to pray for the presidency. I want us to pray uh, for, 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 the, for, the, for the parliament that is both houses. I want us to pray for the county governments. I want us to pray for this nation. I just want us to pray uh, over these issues as we believe God together. And I want us to pray starting with the, our president. Go before God, open your mouth and pray for the leader of this nation, our president, His Excellency. Uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Let's go before God and pray for him together with his uh, deputy. Let's pray for the presidency that the will of God will prevail, that God will guide our president, that Lord will give him wisdom even as he makes decisions in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you because you are God. You have reminded us in your word that we have a responsibility as those people who name the name of the Lord to pray for all those who are in authority in the name of Jesus. And therefore today, my God and my Father, Almighty God, the ruler and the king everlasting, the mighty God, he who was and is and is to come, our heavenly father, we pray for our president. Oh God, we know that our president here, Redeemer, has an awesome responsibility as the head of state, as the head of the government. Oh Lord, we know that he has an enormous burden, dear Redeemer, and the decisions that he makes, dear Redeemer, are decisions that affect all the inhabitants of this nation. And therefore, Lord, Lord, our prayer today in the name of Jesus is that God you strengthen our president is that God Almighty your wisdom will prevail upon his life in the name of Jesus Lord we are praying for grace upon him in the name of Jesus oh we pray as he open his mouth to speak that you speak oh dear Lord and he will act oh dear Father with honesty and integrity in the name of Jesus oh God in all situations in all circumstances in the name of the Lord my God and my father we pray that you shall bring to our president dear Lord people who are strong people who are mature counsel us dear Lord who fear God counsel us who are selfless men of God men who fear you that they'll be able to counsel with the president in the name of Jesus we pray that you remove from the king oh God people who are not right people who may be corrupt remove him from near the president in the name of Jesus oh God almighty I pray that you give our our president the wisdom to reject any counsel that is not in line with your will in the name of Jesus we pray oh God Almighty for strength we pray dear Lord God Almighty that you pull him to yourself that you draw him to yourself in the name of Jesus father we pray even for unity in the presidency dear Redeemer the president of the government the deputy president there shall be unity dear Lord for the delivery of the services to this nation in the name of Jesus, we thank you, oh Lord God, for we pray in Jesus' name. Let us pray for the parliament. Let's pray for the uh, members of parliament. Pray for the Senate. Pray for the issues touching on the, on the revenue bill that this will be resolved as soon as possible in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray for the members of parliament. Pray for the Senate. Pray, pray, pray as the God Almighty will lead you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the members of parliament, dear Lord. Both houses, dear Redeemer, we pray in Jesus' name. Oh God Almighty, as they open, dear Redeemer, their mouths to discuss legislation dear God in this nation I pray in Jesus name that truth will be found in their hearts in the name of Jesus I pray that the wisdom of God will prevail in the name of Jesus I pray mighty God that there will be unity between members of parliament even the senate they will speak with the unity in the name of Jesus that the interest of this nation will take the center stage in the name of Jesus my God and my father we refuse the spirit of selfishness and greed we defeat you the spirit which is evil in Jesus name the spirit of corruption we defeat you in Jesus name and we pray mighty God even as we elected these members to those houses the Lord God the aspirations that they had in the beginning to give services to the people of this nation Lord it shall be restored in the name of Jesus our God and our Redeemer we rise against the competition that has been there between the upper house and the lower house we refuse that kind of uh, uh, antagonism in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the county allocation revenue bill that has been the Senate for weeks now and there has been a deadlock. We pray this week there shall be a breakthrough in the name of Jesus that money will be released to the counties that the counties and the people will not continue to suffer. We pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
I want us to pray for the county government. I want us to pray for the county governments. I want us to pray for the governors. I want us to pray even for the members of county assemblies. Even at such a time like this, these are the people who are down there with the people. Pray that services will be lended to the citizens of this nation without fear, without favor, and without any discrimination in Jesus' name. Go before God and pray for the counties in Jesus' mighty holy name. Father, heaven and Father. Oh Lord God Almighty, as you gave the, uh, the, the, the leadership of this nation the wisdom to divide this country into counties, we have said 47 counties, we know oh God, we, sometimes we feel that these counties are too many, but God I pray, even in the meantime in the name of Jesus, that the governors oh Lord, will be able to give services to the people in the right way in the name of Jesus. We rise against the spirit of corruption right now oh God in our courts, we have several governments governance who are being followed because of mis mis misappropriating uh, monies that are meant to serve the people in their counties. We pray in Jesus' name that every governor or any governor who has been corrupt, Lord God, they shall be face the law and they shall be able to be, to, 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 they shall be judged according to the law in the name of Jesus. We stop the spirit of corruption in counties in the name of Jesus. We pray for the MCAs, the members of the county assemblies. They shall shall also be responsible. They shall discharge their responsibilities to the citizens without favor, without discrimination, in transparency, with accountability, in an open way, in the name of Jesus. We bless our 47 counties. In Jesus' mighty holy name, we do pray. Hallelujah. I want us to pray for the body of Christ. I want us to pray for the body of Christ. Just take some time to pray for the body of Christ. At such a time like this, we feel like it was a time of the war of Jericho when Jericho, when the war surrounded Jericho, but God gave the, uh, the children of Israel the instruction to go around the war and to, uh, and to make a shout and the walls came down clamoring. This same God has not changed. We may be facing some uh, 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 challenges that look insurmountable, but with the God, we shall be able to scale these walls and with the God we shall be able to overcome in Jesus' name. Let's go before God and pray for believers, even at such a time like this as we pray for the body of Christ. Father God, we thank you because Lord you shall enable us to face any obstacles that we face along the way to, 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 to our path of, to our destiny in the name of Jesus. We do not fear. We have the faith in you that with you there is nothing that is impossible. We pray for the believers. We pray for Christ's followers in this nation and in the entire world that the church will continue to grow strong day by day in the name of Jesus we shall not allow fear but we shall choose to we have chosen to take strength in you because God you change is not we bless the body of Christ and we pray that the church will continue to grow strong not just in Kenya but in the entire world to the praise and to the honor of your name Lord we thank you we worship you we glorify your holy name we give you praise and we give you honor, when for we do pray in, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to encourage you, we have sent to you the prayer points, uh, you can check in your mail and in your WhatsApp and you can be able to continue to pray, let us continue to believe God because God has the solution to our challenges and to our problems, we do not, our help does not come from the east or from the west, but our help comes from the Lord. Let's continue to believe and to trust God over the issues that are bedeviling this nation and the entire world. And we do know that God is coming through and he has come through for us. It shall be well in Jesus' name. At this particular time, I want to give you time to, an, an opportunity to be able to send your offerings. Please go to your uh, phone. Uh, go to your phone and go to Lipana Mpesa. You are going to... Uh, the option of uh, goods and uh, buy goods and services. It will ask you for a till number, and our till number hasn't changed. It is 801699. You can send your offerings, you can send your tithes, and we do want to appreciate you for your faithfulness that you have continued to support this vision, and the Lord God indeed bless you. At this particular time, I want you to help me receive our bishop to come and pray for you as we continue with the service in Jesus' name. Put your hands together as the bishop comes to take the, over the service. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you so much, those of you who are able to follow this live stream and uh, also those that catch this on Wednesday night. We appreciate all of you. 
Uh, we also acknowledge all those who are able to make this happen, uh, the media team, uh, those that are in the sound control and the projections of the notes, and also our worship team. Thank you for your giving. We appreciate that you partner with us. We believe in the vision of Deliverance Church Rangata. We sincerely appreciate you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to uh, communicate your words to people around the world, to people in this country. And we thank you for the opportunity through the digital platform to proclaim the message of hope to the people. Thank you, dear Lord, for all those that have given today and those that continue to give in support of the ministry here in Langata, Nairobi. We bless you, ask that you guide us even as we examine your word, that your word will come with clarity and we shall all be blessed in sharing the principles that are in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want to ask the worship team to take their recess for this time. And uh, I'm now uh, bringing to you, uh, as a, we've been on a journey where we have been examining the value of godly friends when we talk about our spiritual growth and development. And uh, we have uh, been on a journey and this journey has to be with a question we have asked about what is the measure of your faith. And we move to the situation where we started now looking at not just the measure of faith in relation to, uh, to, to us just considering that faith uh, is, uh, is one of those things that the Bible says above all. Uh, put, you know, the, the, how we apply faith in our lives because of the importance of faith in this journey. We examine the book of Romans 12, uh, 12 verse 3 and we started asking ourselves, what is the measure of your faith? Because God deals with you and me according to the measure of our faith. And it is so, so important that each one of us endeavor to grow in our faith and part of the growth in faith is what we have been looking at when, where we say uh, for, for you, need to, uh, you need to surround yourself with people who will be able to grow your faith uh, in the things that they share with you. And we have been examining uh, 10 marks of Godly friends and now we are actually in number 10. Uh, the good thing is that all these things are recorded and you are able to visit uh, and, uh, our church and be able to buy, uh, we, we've been discovering the 10 marks of true godly friends, and now we are in, uh, in mark number, number 10, and we welcome you to walk with us uh, at this very, very important uh, lesson, uh, which begins with the book of Proverbs 27, verse 17, Proverbs 27, 17, says, I, uh, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Now, this is a question in my conversation as we continue to examine this account, which is actually... Um, a continued lesson, this being question number, uh, lesson number 17, is your friend an enemy in disguise? That's a question. Think about that. Because a very, very uh, challenge, it's a very heavy question. But is your friend an enemy in disguise? Is it possible to have somebody you think is a friend, but as a real fact, he is actually an enemy? Because a godly friend uh, helps us to grow. One of the things that we understand is that a godly friend will add value by making you sharper. 
a godly friend will add value to you by making you sharper. Uh, one of the most popular statements associated with uh, John Maxwell is that the people closest to you will either add value to you or take value from you. And it is wisdom to always associate with people who will add value to you. So Christian friendship is a treasure because it helps us cling to our greatest treasure, who is Jesus Christ. Having godly people in our life gives a praise, gives a praise for us to grow, get counsel from others who are more experienced and share each other's burden with one another. Like we have said, having godly friends helps us to grow and get counsel and share burdens. The best gift of friends, or the best gift a friend can give is a commitment to fight for our joy and communion with Christ. How about that? That the best gift a friend can give you is that commitment is encouraging you towards a commitment to fight for our joy and communion with Christ. Now, therefore, conversely, the worst distortion, on the contrary, the worst distortion of friendship arises when a friend encourages us, consciously or unconsciously, to praise our affection elsewhere. That's also a big statement. That on the contrary of what we have said in the first instance, the worst distortion of friendship arises when a friend encourages us consciously or unconsciously to praise uh, to praise our affection elsewhere. Now, the Apostle Peter unwittingly acts out this kind of distortion in Matthew 16. Jesus tells his disciples that he will die and rise again in Matthew 16, 21. Peter rebukes Jesus with what was surely a well-intentioned comment from a loyal friend. Because what does Peter say? Far it be from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Uh, you, you notice that when Peter said this, with all intentions, he meant well. He was talking about how he protects his loving Savior. But Christ had to face the cross. Facing the cross for our Savior was not something that was going to compromise for anything. So it looks like the deepest, most genuine, most beautiful form of friendship, but Peter's word put him between Jesus and his obedience to the Father. Take note of that. In the look of this, uh, I, if you can picture it in the natural, is, you, are, you, you know, is if you're in a situation where the enemies want to get a hold of you, and then you have a somebody who comes and says, no, 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 you can't touch this person. Now, so that is what Peter was doing. Peter said, no, 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 whatever, this is not, we're going to let this, we will not let this happen. But you need to notice that it looks like the deepest, most genuine, most beautiful form of friendship. But again, you find Jesus rebuking Peter in a rebuke that was very, very cadid. Because his, ignorant, his ignorance made a friend into an enemy, at least for that moment. Why? Because we find Jesus telling Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. I'm talking about Matthew 16 and verse number 23. What Peter thought was helpful, Jesus called it a hindrance. What Peter assumed was godly friendship, Jesus called it satanic opposition. Why? It was so important that Jesus fulfills the mission for, for why he came. But understand, Peter's intentions were very genuine. 
And we need to ask ourselves, can there be situations in our life where we may be think people even with the best of intentions may be actually causing you to close the line to where you are opposing the purpose of God in your life. And that is why it is so important for us to have friends who are sensitive to the voice of God. Friends that are sensitive to what God is saying. This is very, very important for all of us. And um, true friends bring us to God in our weakness. True friends bring us to God in our weakness. Behold, some men were bringing, uh, this, is, this is another very, very fascinating account, where we have men bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst, uh, in the midst uh, before Jesus. Now, this we find in the book of Luke, chapter number five. Now, then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in, uh, and lay before him. And when they could not find him, uh, they could not find how they might bring him in. Because of the crowd, they went up on the, on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. Now, walking through life in a god belittling world with our sin-ridden flesh against a hell-bent enemy, it's too hard to be attempted alone. Yeah. Walking through life in a God belittling world. Because we live in a world where most people don't believe when we tell them that our God is mighty, our God is everlasting, our God can do all things. We live in a situation where people really have a very, very different perspective of who God is. Now, therefore, that's why we are saying walking in, a little, in, a, in life in a God belittling world with our sin ridden flesh against a hell bent enemy. It's too hard to be attempted alone. Alone, we easily believe the lies of Satan. Alone, we buckle under the weight of our sin. Alone, we grow discouraged and weary. Like the para para paralytic, we need the help of other friends to carry us to God. And I want you to picture this in your mind. When these people, the easiest way would have been to be able to bring this person through the door to Jesus. That's just the easiest way. Just, just be able to bring it. But the, there was no way. And consider the determination that made these people go to the roof and open the tiles and then tie him and just lower him slowly by slowly until where Jesus was. This can only be done by true friends. You know, superficial friends would want the easy way. Superficial friends are not willing to go into the painful thing to make sure that you as a friend are able to reach your destiny. Superficial friends do not, are not willing to make any sacrifice. But here we see a true friend a, person, a group of people who are willing to open the tiles of a building and be able to bring this man, the paralytic, bring him all the way up to where Jesus was. Do you have friends like that? Do you know what it is to have friends who are willing to go an extra mile to ensure that you get help? That is what we are talking about today in this 10, uh, 10th uh, mark of godly friends. So how can we bring others to God? We listened to a sister confess a hidden sin and wash her 
uh, with the truth that Christ was uh, has cleansed her and made her whole. We can meet the practical needs of those enduring intense suffering in Jesus' name. We can simply bring our friends to God in prayer, asking him to do greater things in their lives than we can do for them. This is a gentleman called Adrian Lodgers, who has written The Marks of True Friends. And I'll see how much I'm able to cover on this. Hopefully I can cover everything, but if not, we can still pick it up. But The Marks of a True Friend. I want you to listen to what Adrian Lodgers have to say on this. Do you know that the deepest need of the human heart is for intimate friendship? Do you know that? That the deepest need of the human heart is for intimate friendships. Now, I'm not talking about casual acquaintances or false friends, but true friends. And let me give you three marks of a true friend. Number one, a true friend sharpens. He will make you sharper, he will make you a sharper person, a better person, according to Proverbs 27, verse 17. Iron sharpened iron, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Now, a true friendship will put an edge on your life. False friends dull your life, blunt your influence, and drag you down. And that is why I cannot hesitate you to get rid of false friends. Get rid of them. Because they're not adding any value to you. I still remember a statement that was made here very many years ago uh, by uh, one of the young men who was one of the pastors here, but now he planted another church. Uh, <laughs> he's a pastor of Southern Leverage, Muikia. And, and Reverend Muikia is, a very, is one, he's a very interesting young man because sometimes he has a way of stating things that you can't forget. But he said something that I will never forget. He said that when a tree loses a dry leaf, it loses, it loses nothing. <laughs> How true is that? That when a dry leaf drops from a tree, that tree has lost nothing. And I must say there are people, even if they dropped out of your life, you have lost nothing. Because actually, trying to carry them they become a burden that only reduces the potential of your effectiveness. And if they can't shape up, you need to allow them to shape out. I know it sounds kind of cruel, but, you know, <laughs> that's the truth. Don't take carry someone as an excess baggage. First friend will dull your life, will blunt your inference, will drag you down. Anybody who makes it easier for you to do wrong is not a true friend. Anyone who encourages your, your, your lethargic attitude or your slothfulness, that is not a true friend. A true friend is the one who tells you to arise and quit yourself like a man. And do something. One of the truest tests of friendship is asking yourself, am I a better person for having known this person? Yeah? And you need to evaluate. <laughs> you can list down the people you consider your friends, maybe one to ten. That's sometimes I tell people, it will be a very costly exercise for you to have very close friends who are ten. In fact, most, uh, most psychologists advise that you, you remit them to five. Because whenever you bring somebody to that proximity, you have to be able to do certain things that are fundamental. And we are all limited to what we can do. Jesus had three. In what was this, could be considered to have been the 
the circle of the closest. Yeah? Now, what a truth. So, a true friend sharpens. Number, number B, a true friend sticks. A true friend is steady fast. If you want to know who your real friends are, <laughs> just make some kind of foolish um, mistake and see whether or not they will leave you. I know they will say you are trying to test them. But <laughs> life is like a ship. Some people get on and off board very easily. Some will stay on board as long as everything is sailing smoothly. You know, I, I will never forget one of my bishops, and I have tremendous respect for our bishop, the General Secretary of the Women's Church, the uh, Bishop Dr. J.B. Masinde. Sometimes he makes remarks that are very, very uh, interesting. I remember one time in a meeting he said, Akuna Kanisa Aitokangui Watu Anaenda. Only <laughs> So he was trying to tell us when you open the doors of the church, there are people who will be coming in, but there will be others who will be going out. And as a pastor, you have no capacity of keeping somebody in your church who has intentions to go. It's not possible. Please don't kill yourself with stress and anxiety over anybody who has gone. And discovering that is a great blessing. You know, our church, we just have 27 years old, you know, I think this much, or 27. So we're in our 28th year. But I can tell you that if we check through the, our records of people who have come here and gone, there are so many. But we have kept growing. Is it fun? It's not fun. You know, every pastor would like people to remain. I mean, me, from a pastor's heart, I hate to see people go. But I can't keep anybody. That's why I like when you come and connect to the Lutheran Church in Langata, I want you to know what is the value of you belonging here. Yeah. And one of the mark of the value of belonging is that you're connecting to the prophetic message. You're connecting not only to the prophetic message, but to the, to the prophet himself. And if you realize you have a big, serious disparity and struggle, you know, I also like what they say that you can never receive a prophetic a blessing from a prophet who you don't deceive. So it is so important that you make this decision. What I'm saying, God desires that when we connect with friends, we stick with our friends. One of the greatest joy I have uh, as a pastor here for the last 27 years is that I can see people who were part of the Sunday school here in church who are still here. Meaning they have gone through all the education system, they've gone through university, they are now in their profession working, and they still say, I belong to DCL. I mean, to me, that is my greatest letter of recommendation. It is so difficult to say. When, when you're talking about people sticking with you 25 years, and above. I mean, if, if you are that awkward, I mean, but that does not mean that people cannot come and go. Some of them go because they need to go and maybe become a blessing somewhere else. And they should go in peace. Amen? Not with any acrimony. Bana Sifiwe. I know I'm recording, so I don't expect a, an amen, but I hope you can say an amen at home. 
So, <laughs> yeah. A true friend will stick. Yeah. They will hang up with you. I mean, they will be there. Through thick and thin, they will be there. I want to be discussing, because I realize I need to wind up shortly, about the importance of social capital. Uh, and I'll try to look for a biblical uh, account, even as I continue to discuss this matter here, about friends adding value, because there are people who are going through very distressing situations, and they have nobody they can talk to, because they are very poor in terms of social capital. God never desired that you can be a loner, that you suffer alone, you carry burdens alone. God desires that you can have people who you relate to. And people, regardless of what you tell them you're going through, they will be there for you. Regardless of the pain that you may be going there, through, they are there. Worship team, if you can take your positions. I realize I'm running out of time, but I'll pick up this lesson next. And please, make sure you are tuned in to follow this because I believe the things I'm sharing here are very real. That you need friends that can stick with you. When you're going through some very tough times, Whether you're going through joy or pain, those ones are there. And they will stand up for you. You need friends who can defend you. You need friends who can even give all their resources. If some crazy person made a false accusation against you, and you went to court and you had to go to a court of law, people who can put their money together and get the best legal mind to protect because they trust you. That is the kind of friends that we need. They will pay anything to enhance success in your life. And that is something that you need. If you're there and you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, I really, really, I've been wounded so much. I don't know what it is to trust people for friendship. Sometimes I feel as only I trust you, God, and only you that I trust. I don't trust anybody else. I want to say this. It is very, very important that we can build trust with people. You know, say how can you love God, claim to love God who you have never seen, you can't Love the person you have seen. In the same vein, I know we trust God, but you need to learn to trust people. Not all people are false. Not all people are, uh, can, can, can cheat you. And of course, we know that these challenges are there. So if you want to commit yourself to the Lord by faith, I want you to make this prayer. I want you to make this prayer and make it by faith. Dear Lord Jesus, I open up my life to you. Come and save my soul. I know you are the most precious friend, but I also recognize that I need some real physical friends in this world who will help me walk through to achieve the mission that you have called me to. Help me to identify them. And when I get a hold of them, help me to know how to protect those relationships for posterity. Dear Lord, help me not to hold on to anybody who is not adding any value to me. I desire to live for you and to serve you. I honor you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we commit the barons of this week before you. 
as we wait for a few more days and gather again uh, in the, on the sanctuary on Sunday. God of heaven, we are asking that you be with us and continue to grow our services. Oh Lord, continue to move upon the hearts of people, not just to enjoy the comfort of uh, hearing the service from their homes, but for them to come. And we also pray for the Interfaith Council that they will announce the further de-escalation so that we can move from phase one to phase two. Oh God of heaven, hear our cry. And I also pray for the issue of the flattening of the curve. Oh God, we, we got an announcement that four days in a row, the numbers have remained below 5%. It's a prayer that the next 10 days can remain the same so that the, the, the flattening of the curve can be announced in Kenya. We shun the voices of those who are claiming about a resurgence of COVID-19 in Kenya. In the counties or everywhere, we pray as, as you bring corona down in Kenya, you bring it elsewhere in the world and that, oh God, you will change our story from corona because it is within your power and jurisdiction in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him Come on.